is that these illiterate, dirty, poor, what do they know about pulling themselves up? If we don't do it for them, they won't be able to do it for themselves. And we have got to where we got, not because mommy and daddy had the money in their pockets, or because we went to Rajagiri College and they didn't go to Rajagiri College. So we know how to do it. Now this illusion that the civil service had was fed from the top, from Jawaharlal Nehru onwards. It was said that what we needed was a meritocratic civil service and that given the excellent job that the Indian civil service, the ICS, had done for the British Raj, the continuation of the ICS system into independent India would give the same results for the objectives of the new Indian Republic. But I've just given you the figure. 60, 71 years after I was born, the first six of which were under the British Raj, and 65 of which had been in independent India, and being a midnight's child, the first generation to really assume public office after we became independent. I do ask myself, as they lower me into my grave, as to what have we achieved? And my friend, my college mate, Dr. Montek Singh Adwalia, who is also being lowered into the grave, leaps out, and he says, oh, 8% GDP growth. And I say, please continue lowering me, because your 8% GDP growth has only resulted in 0.8% poverty alleviation. And I didn't come into the IFS or into politics in order to enable poor Mr. Ambani to add one more floor to the 27 floors that he's already built to accommodate his wife, two children and one dog. And on being asked, why did you do this? He said, well, what do I do with my 600 servants? So they've even got a few hundred servants for the dog. So is this the India that we wanted? It obviously isn't. But it's not a flop India because all of us who joined the IAS in 1963 suddenly became completely crooked. Or that we threw away all the books that we had read to get in. It went wrong because the system, or the British Indian system, was to look at the nature of our society in the 19th century and come to the conclusion quite correctly that both because it was a highly feudal country and plagued on the one hand by the caste system and on the other hand by communal rivalries between different religious sects, the civil servant's most important job was to be impartial to be above the prejudices of the society that he was serving so that whatever it was that he was supposed to deliver to the people would be delivered equitably and justly. And to ensure that this happened, there were two principles invoked by the British Raj for the administration of this huge country with a population more than 20 times higher that they had in their little island back at home. Which was to say that the civil servant must be an alien. He cannot belong to this society. Because if he did, then if he's a Naya, he'll help the Nayas. If he's a Nambudri, he'll help the Brahmins. If he's a Syrian Christian, he'll only help the Syrian Christians. And God alone will then save the Catholics. So because this is a completely salami sliced society, they said that to get just delivery, he should not belong to any of them. So they sent in not only white people, who were obviously idiot, but also saw to it that if VP Madan came from Kerala, his posting was to the United Provinces near Agra, or if he was a Bengali, he'd be sent to Gujarat, and if he was a Gujarati, he was sent to Bengal. So that alienation was maintained. 
And it was a sign of the superiority of the civil service that they could not speak the language of the locals except in a dreadful accent to show that they are different. And so there were many locals who started speaking their own mother tongue in that funny accent. Ya ao, tume jao, all of this came at that time, a reverse story. But there was also the fear that if you post into such an unequal society, then the local Nawab would ask the district magistrate to come to dinner. And after two dinners, he'd suggest you come half an hour earlier for a little drop of something before we start eating. And after four dinners, he'd say a drop of something before the dinner and a notch girl or two after dinner. So the civil servant, lonely as he was in this district, was in danger of going native. And so before he went completely native, the British guard decided he should be transferred. So the entire civil service system was based on, number one, the civil servant being an alien, and number two, his being under orders of transfer. Now the British were so intelligent that they never applied this principle to their own country. But they gave it to us, and we took it. And for 36 years, my badge spent